All right, this is grade six, unit three, lesson three. And in this lesson, students are going to be measuring with different sized units. And the point of this lesson is students are going to be, and I'm gonna scroll right down here, students are gonna be developing familiarity with standard units of length. So at length, volume, weight, and mass. And basically folks, um, we understand that society as a, as a whole, we're not really good at measurement beyond maybe some basic things like what does a two liter bottle look like or how many pounds does a person weigh. Uh, we have a very limited you know, internal understanding of measurement. And so th this lesson is designed to create um, experiences for students to begin uh, getting a sense of what uh, units uh, of measure feel like in real life. So, you know, let's get started. And the whole point of this lesson is really uh, students are going to be kind of doing some real life experiences. So for the warm up, it's a kind of a unique problem. It says that students are going to be given two Cuisinaire rods. They're going to be shown two Cuisinaire rods. And uh, and I don't remember which lengths. It doesn't really matter. The point is they're going to be shown a, a, a Cuisinaire rod that's long and then a Cuisinaire rod that's short. All right. That's the whole point. And if you don't have Cuisinaire rods, these are the Cuisinaire rods are like these. It's a manipulative. <clears throat> uh, you can use large paper clips and small paper clips to to do the same thing and the but the idea of this problem is you say okay if i have uh if i have a large cuisinaire rod or if i have a small cuisinaire rod and i want to know uh how many cuisinaire rods oh here it is green and blue all right well all right i'll just make this one green style green and now we're good to go okay green and blue and it says does it take more green rods or blue rods to um, measure the width of a piece of printer paper so uh, parents and teachers we're gonna let students kind of think about if they were gonna line a bunch of these blue Cuisinaire rods up how many would you need to uh, extend the length of a piece of paper? And then if you're going to use the green Cuisinaire rods and line a bunch of them up, how many would you need to um, measure the, the length of a piece of paper? And which Cuisinaire rod would you need more of to measure that length of the piece of paper? And that's the idea. Just getting sent a sense of um, measurement in this case, recognizing that the longer the Cuisinaire rod, the fewer of them you are going to need, and the shorter the Cuisinaire rod, the more of them you're going to need. That is not an intuitive thing. So we're going to allow our students to explore that. Now, 3.2 measurement stations. There are five different stations, if I recall. Station one, station two, Station three, station four, and station five. Okay, yeah, there's five five stations, and uh, it's uh, teach, teachers. You're gonna have to take some time to set this up. It's not a trivial process here. Don't skip this lesson. Students need a sense of measurements and what that feels. What does a kilogram feel like? What does a, a centimeter look like? You know, they need this. So take your time, set it up. <clears throat> but you will need to set up some stuff. I'm going to call out specifically uh, number one, number two. Those are pretty easy. Number three is where I think if I'm remembering it correctly. So uh, three, if uh, no, 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 no. Number four, station four, station four, man, there's quite a lot going on here and you have some options. And if I recall correctly, I'm going to go to back to my document here, uh, right? Where are we? Oh yeah, here, man. Okay. So as I'm scrolling through here, uh, station four gives you some choices here. Uh, and 
And so I'm going to go back here. Okay, station four gives you some serious choices. Of course, station three requires water. If you don't want to use water, watch the video instead. Station four, uh, you have some options uh, that if you, let's scroll down here, station four, no, I don't like where I'm going here. Station, where is station four? There. Uh, so you can, uh, you can use the real objects if you want to use the real objects. Uh, a second option is you can um, use the paper version and the paper version looks like this and you can scroll down here and you can create the paper version that simulates these real objects, russet potatoes. And the idea is you're going to cut out this spinny thing and probably on cardstock and you're going to affix it using some sort of paper fastener to the back of this scale, this simulated scale. And then you're going to rotate the circle here. And that circle is going to show up through these windows that you are going to have to cut out. And you're simulating weighing some russet potatoes. You're going to simulate a pencil. You're going to simulate socks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a third option that you have for station four is to use the included applet down here. There is an applet that you can use to do all of these things, to measure the pencil, the cell phone, the potatoes, the milk jug, et cetera. All right, so st uh, I tell you, station four is not a trivial thing for you to think about. And then station five, pretty straightforward. Although because students are gonna be using salt, you might wanna put it on a tray so that you're not spilling salt all over the floor in your classroom. So that is the stations and it's, it's elaborate, but it's fun. And so let your students experience measurement. Uh, I'm gonna jump straight down to uh, the practice problems. So let's take a look at that. Uh, practice problems, there we are. All right, so let's quickly do this. Decide if each measurement of length, area, volume, or weight uh, oh, it decide if each thing is a length, an area, a volume, or a weight. All right, so how many centimeters across is a handprint? That's a length. How many square inches of paper needed? That's an area. How many gallons of water? Well, that's a volume. Uh, how many pounds in a bag of potatoes? That is a weight. All right, so I've given you an example of each, a length, an area, a volume, and a weight. I'm gonna skip the rest of the problems, but you get the idea. <clears throat> Question two, <clears throat> Claire says, this classroom is 11 meters long. A meter is longer than a yard. So if I measure the length of this classroom in yards, I will get less than 11 yards because a meter is longer than a yard. Okay, do you agree with Claire? Hmm, let's see. If we have a classroom that is 11 meters long, and let's say that that's 11, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's, <laughs> there you go. That is a horrible looking set of 11, but that's okay. Now, if a yard is shorter than a meter, if it's shorter than a meter, that means we're going to need more of them to stretch across the 11 meters not less. So I do not agree with Claire. Uh, we're going to need more yards to stretch than the 11 meters, right? More than 11 meters, uh, more than 11 yards in order to stretch and reach 11 meters. All right, number three, Tyler's height is 57 inches. What could be his height in centimeters? All right, so now the idea is we've learned that an inch is bigger than a centimeter. So we're gonna need more centimeters to reach 57, not fewer. 
than 57 centimeters. We're going to need more than 57 centimeters to reach those 57 inches. So we know it can't be 22. We know it can't be uh, 57. It can't be the same number of centimeters to reach 57 inches. So it's got to be one of these two. And we know that a centimeter, I don't know, is about twice, two centimeters or so fits into an inch. It's technically, it's about 2.54, uh, but it's about two, two and a half centimeters fit into each inch. That means it's got to be 148, not the 3,551. Number four, a large soup pot holds 20 quarts. What could be its volume in liters? So a quart and a liter, we sort of learned, they're very similar in, in volume. They're very similar. So we're going to choose the number that is close to 20. So we know it can't be 7.57. So it's got to be 19 or 21. And I ain't going to lie. I don't remember. Oh, 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 and then we have D down here. Uh, so D, it definitely can't be D because D is too big. It's 75.7. So we definitely know it can't be A or D. It's got to be either B or C. Hey, parents and teachers, without me Googling this and looking at this and without me actually doing this activity right off the top of my head, I don't remember if a liter is less than a quart, in which case we would need 21 liters to reach 20 quarts. Or if a liter is slightly larger than a quart, in which case we would only need 19 liters to equal 20 quarts. I'm not sure. I remember. If I was a betting man, I think it would be 19, but I don't, I don't quite remember. So there you go. All right. Number five, Claire wants to mail a package that weighs five, four and a half pounds. Uh, what could this weight be in kilograms? So how do pounds and kilograms relate? Well, we know that kilograms are a little bit more than twice as heavy as the pounds. So since kilograms are heavier than pounds, we're going to need less than four and a half kilograms to equal four and a half pounds. So it's got to be less. So we know it can't be four and a half. We know it can't be nine. We know it can't be 4,500, so by a process of elimination, it's got to be 2.04. All right, let's do a little bit of review. All right, it says Noah bought 15 baseball cards for $9. Assuming each baseball card cost the same amount, answer the following questions. All right, so we want to know how much will 30 baseball cards cost? Well, if 15 baseball cards cost $9, twice as many baseball cards is going to cost twice as much. There's our 18. At this rate, how much will only 12 baseball cards cost? So we know 12 baseball cards will have to be less than $9 because we're buying less than 15. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent this in a table. It says, do you think it's going to be better represented in a table or a double number line? Well, I'm going to say table because I'm kind of biased towards tables. So let's do it. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to say uh, 15 cards cost $9. So cards and dollars. And I want to know how much is 12 going to cost right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, uh, let's see. I'm going to find a unit rate. So I'm going to divide by, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to divide by 15 and I'm going to divide by 15. And that's going to scale down my ratio and that's going to scale my ratio down to one. And I'm going to write it as a fraction, nine fifteenths. I don't know what 9 divided by 15 is as a decimal, so I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, 9 fifteenths. And now I want to scale this ratio up by 12, multiplying by 12. So now I need to do 9 fifteenths times 12. 
And I can do a little bit of fancy schmancy math here. And I know that both 12 and 15 are divisible by three. So I get four fifths. And so that equals 36 over five, 36 fifths, which is equal to 7.2. All right. So how much will 12 baseball cards cost? 12 baseball cards will cost $12. No, $7, sorry, $7.20. All right, number seven. This looks like it's our last one. Jada uh, traveled 135 miles in three hours. Andre traveled 228 hours in six hours, uh, 228 miles in six hours. Both Jada and Andre traveled at that constant speed. So uh, how far? Did Jada travel in one hour? How far did Andre travel in one hour? And who travels faster? All right, so basically, we're gonna make two tables. We're gonna make one table for Jada. We're gonna make another table for Andre. All right, and let's get it going. So uh, Jada traveled in hours and miles. So she traveled three hours in 135 miles. And we're going to convert that to a unit rate. And Andre, similarly, hours and miles. Andre traveled, uh, he did six hours in 228 miles. And we want to find the unit rate there. So let's let's dig into that. So if I want the unit rate, meaning I want one hour, I'm going to divide by three. So I'm going to scale my ratio by dividing by three. And three divided by three gives me one. So 135 divided by three gives me, oh golly, three goes into that four times 45. Woohoo! 45 miles in one hour. Uh, are they writing? Oh, it just says traveling. So I guess maybe 45 miles in one hour, probably driving a car. All right. All right. And then similarly, Andre, we want to know one hour. So we're going to divide by six. So we're going to scale that by six and 228 divided by six. I honestly don't know what that is off the top of my head. So 22 divided by six is three with uh, four left over. I got 48. So that's eight. All right, so it is a uh, 38. So Andre in his one hour travels to uh, 38 miles. Meanwhile, Jada travels in her hour 45 miles. So who is traveling faster? Well, clearly Jada is traveling faster because she traveled more miles in her hour than Andre did. And that wraps up <clears throat> And see, that wraps up uh, grade six, unit three, lesson three, uh, learning all about measurement. And don't forget to subscribe.